this morning. Please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is a time of year where everybody in the city, you only have to look around you at time of buying gifts, giving gifts, thinking about gifts. It absolutely dominates our culture. And since it's not always a good thing, beware of the pressure of this time of year. It's a secular spirit. It's a wrong spirit behind you, a force, a pressure. That's why so many commit suicide, get depressed at this time of year. There is an atmosphere in this time of year that is not of the Spirit of God. And a pressure to be or to do. Don't come under that. We are not of this world. We live in this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are not of this world. And we are not to come under that sort of an atmosphere. Do you know our whole society is dominated with the giving of gifts? That's what's going to dominate this city tomorrow. Right across their city. Every child is going to wake up and its first thought will be, What? gift have I got. I want my prezies. That's going to dominate the homes. I want, I want, I demand. And then the kid one hour later throws the expensive gift over its shoulder, never to look at it. By lunchtime or by evening it'll be broken in smithereens and he'll never think of the gift again. You know I come from a generation where a box I tell you, you played with it for the next weeks. You got more fun out of a cardboard box than the actual present that come in it. And you went, man, what a box. Isn't that right? But saints here this morning, in this gathering, I do want to come to gifts. I was going to go a different direction. I felt the Lord strongly speak to me and say, I want you to preach in this series on the church. I don't want you to... Go off from that. I want you to continue preaching the church. And I want you to tell my saints in LCC that I have gifts for them that I want to pour out in this church. Amen. And that's what I want to preach on this morning is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Verse 1. Now concerning... Spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give unto you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For, one, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, yeah. to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and that self same Spirit, dividing to every man severely, severally as he well, let's pray together. Father, we come here as your church worshipping our Redeemer, our Saviour. We magnify him. We want him to be the foundation, the centre. Lord God, we want him to be the focus of everything. And here this morning, we pray, we covet, we desire, we burn with zeal. We have a passion. We come here with faith and with a longing for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Will you pour them out? 
Even on this church, will you distribute them amongst the members of this church? We ask you in agreement and in faith, O oh God, here this morning, we are asking for these nine supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if you're going to use anyone, then use me. My God, I'm asking that you stir up our hearts, nor God, to believe you, O oh God, nor God, to understand, to perceive by the Word of God that you are a God who wants to pour out these gifts even on this church in the Limerick. Father, raise up our hearts to see, to understand and to believe. Lord God, even this morning, this afternoon, today, Lord God, let there be a manifestation of your spirit. Let him shine forth in this body. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> My message, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we've been dealing with the church. What does the church look like? How does the church function? How does it operate? What happens in the church? Or what are the marks of a true church? What does it look like? The real church. Not what calls itself the church. Here this morning, I want to deal with the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the church. They are for the church. They are to be in the church, not in an individual who wanders around the streets. These gifts are for the church, are the body of Christ, and they've been given freely by Christ himself. Notice with me here in verse 1 what it says. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, talking to the church. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now notice that. What does the word ignorant mean? It says, I do not want you ignorant about spiritual gifts in the church. He is saying, I don't want you to lack knowledge about them. I don't want you to be confused about them. I don't want you to misunderstand them. I don't want you to neglect exercise in your brain. Have you studied the gifts of the Holy Spirit biblically? Not what men teach. Not what church practice. Because let me tell you, I reject much of what people teach about the gifts in the church. And what happens in the church and what's called the Holy Spirit in the church. Most of it in this generation, I reject it. Yeah. You know why? It does not line up. With the Bible, it's got nothing to do with the Bible. It is emotion. It is out of man's mind and feelings. But the Holy Spirit isn't in it. And I reject it. You see what he said? I want you to exercise your brain. When the Holy Spirit moves, you don't set aside your brain. You don't set aside your intelligence. You actually use your brain. And the Holy Spirit wants you to use your mind. He wants you to think. He wants you to study. He wants you to consider with the thoughts of your mind. He wants you to give labor to study in the Bible. Have you studied the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Do you know what the Bible teaches? If not, you're ignorant. And you know what? Don't pray for the gifts if you haven't studied about the gifts. Because you don't know what you're asking for. You're actually in ignorance. He is saying here, now concerning the gifts of the Spirit, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You're not using your brain. You're not using intelligence. Oh, I'm just led of the Spirit. Then you're deceived. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? We believe in a sanctified brain. Has the Holy Spirit moved me? It's always going to be in subjection to the written Word of God. Oh, but Brother Keith, I can't help myself. Then it's not the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He leads you. He guides you. He'll never contradict this book. Never. Not once. Never. What Paul is writing here to the church. He is saying there are those who are ignorant about the gifts. They don't know about them. Can you imagine tomorrow? Or me presenting you with a big box today. All wrapped up with your name on it. And saying Jeffrey this gift is for you. At the end of today he walks out the door. And the gift is sitting there. He's never carried it home. He's yeah. never looked at it. He's never opened it. Yeah, yeah. He says oh thanks brother Keith. And he goes out that door. And he never considers it. And we come back Wednesday. And it's still sitting there. And we come back next Sunday. And we come back all through the year. And it's sitting there. And maybe the odd time he looks at it and he says. 
Oh, brother, thanks for the gift. That's ignorance. Mm. That is rudeness. That is that you don't know what you're dealing with. Oh, thank you for the gift. But you have never opened it up. You don't care about it. Mm. And there's many in the church say, oh, I know about the gifts. So, oh, yeah, I've seen something. Or I've read something. Do you seek for the gifts? Hallelujah. Do you really understand the gifts? If you've never studied it, you don't care about it. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely if the gifts of the Holy Spirit operated? Wouldn't it be wonderful if someone got healed? Wouldn't it be wonderful if the Holy Spirit speaks through someone? Why are you looking to everyone else? Oh, look, we went through a whole service and there was no manifestation of the Spirit. Did you operate in the gifts of the Spirit? If not, you can never speak. Don't criticize the church if you do not operate in those gifts. Amen. I just want to bring you to the Word of God. You see, ignorance shows itself in many ways. Maybe you have no knowledge of the gifts. That is ignorance. Ignorance isn't bliss. You know the word out there? Ignorance is bliss. If I don't know, I can't be blamed. But the Bible does not allow you. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is ignorance. You're ignorant. You're without knowledge. You're without understanding. But you may know about the gifts. You may have studied about them. But yet you don't seek for them. You don't burn for them. That's ignorance. These gifts could change this church. These gifts could protect this church from a wolf. That has come to destroy lives. Do you hear me? These gifts are very practical. Oh, we don't believe in the gifts for today. What you don't believe in the discerning of spirits? That we need desperately in the church. This is the greatest hour of deception in church history. We need the discerning of spirits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also there's a type of ignorance in Corinth. All the gifts operated in Corinth. There were speaking in tongues, there were prophecies, there were healings. But there was an abuse of the gifts. You see, that can be ignorance as well. Oh, we operate in the gifts. We know the gifts. I'm moved in the Spirit. Why are you disobeying the Word of God then? Why do the gifts not line up with what the Bible teaches? That is ignorance. Haven't we met over recent weeks? You meet a new Christian, say three years, and say, do you know I've got the gift of healing? They haven't told you they love Jesus. They haven't told you anything about the Bible. All they want to tell you, do you know all the dreams I had? And they'll sit there and talk about dream after dream after dream. I tell you, that isn't the Holy Spirit. Yet too much pizza. (laughs) Man, you can't even quote a scripture, but you're telling me there about all of the these dreams and as I've said before I've met people in this city who have more dreams, more revelations, more prophecies than Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel all rolled up together. They're more spiritual than anyone in the Bible. They really are. But you know, I start quizzing them uh, uh, about things in the Bible. They're utterly ignorant. They don't know what propitiation is. And they don't know what substitution is. And they don't know what sanctification is. And they don't know what holiness is. And they don't know that the Bible teaches to abstain from alcohol. Mm. They don't know. Mm -hmm. Don't have the first clue. I'm telling you what goes on in the church of our day. Look what Paul says in verse 2. Ye know... Ye know that ye, being very personal here, (coughs) ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as ye were led. Paul is speaking about the Christians in Corinth. Most of them used to use statues and idols and icons. Most of them were caught up in idolatry. If you use a statue, even if it's of Jesus or Mary, you are an idolater and you're disobeying God. Yeah. And you'll end up in hell. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Paul taught it. You use, oh, but I'm not worshipping the statue, I'm worshipping God. It helps me. That's idolatry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not to make an image of the person you worship. It's forbidden. Here's Paul saying, you used to be carried away. You're all Gentiles. Most of you were Catholics in here. You were actually carried away with dumb idols. Statues that couldn't speak to you and yet you're praying to them. 
They couldn't see you. They couldn't hear your prayers. They couldn't speak. They couldn't heal your body. They couldn't know you. They couldn't feel love. And yet you bowed before those statues. You actually gave those statues. You lit candles. You devoted yourself to them. You spent money on adorning your rooms and your houses like Mary here with statues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, and do you know what Paul is saying in Corinth? You were carried away, you were led, it influenced your life. You were actually carried along with the influence of dumb statues. Mm -hmm. You know, all through the Bible, the prophets and the apostles mock and say, look, they cannot speak. You, you actually make a statue with your hands. The thing cannot speak. And you're worshipping that thing. And it has an influence upon your life. Saints, it's no different than the city of Limerick. All across the city, multitudes have been carried away by dumb idols. Statues and idols that could not speak, yeah. could not manifest, could not work, had no power, yeah. had no influence, and yet we devoted ourselves to them. He is saying you're carried away with them, you're left, you're carried, you're driven, you're influenced. And yet they had no power. Saints, can I tell you the real God has power. Amen. He does Amen. hear. Amen. He Amen. does speak. He does act. Amen. He does reveal himself Amen. in the church. Amen. If your God never reveals himself, then he is not the real God of the Bible. I serve a God who makes himself known. He does answer prayer. He does speak from heaven. Yes. Oh, I know I'm against all those people who say, the Spirit led me, and the Spirit led me, and the Spirit told me. Most of that's trash. Yeah. Yeah. The Spirit told you not. Why didn't they tell you to sort out your life? Yeah, amen. Why didn't they tell you to read yeah. the Bible? I had a revelation last night and the Holy Spirit said, go read your Bible in the morning. <laughs> I, I haven't heard anyone no, saying no, that. Never, never, never. Oh, the Holy Spirit told me I was to go and do this. Right. Man, yeah. When's the last time? The Holy Spirit spoke to me last night. Wise up and get into church and stop Amen. being faithful. Amen. I've never heard it. No. Or rarely. You see, the real God does speak. Look at verse 7 here with me for a moment. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with the Lord, to profit the church. Yeah. What is the manifestation of the Spirit? Notice it's of the Spirit, but it's given to individuals in the church. What is the manifestation? It means to make manifest, to reveal his presence, or to shine forth in the midst of our gatherings. It means to make himself visible, not physically, but through members of the body. He shines forth. Saints, if you're here praying for the Holy Spirit to make himself manifest as a cloud, you're, you're wrong. The Holy Spirit shines forth in the members of the body. He wants to make his presence felt. He wants to reveal that he is here. How does he do that? Through the preacher? No. No. He wants to shine forth and man manifest in his body. After all, isn't Christ meant to live in the body? Doesn't Christ, aren't we his members, his body? And Jesus is meant to live in there? Notice with me here. In verse 21, we are to covet, sorry, 31, we are to covet the gifts. Have you ever heard anyone say, seek the Holy Spirit, not his gifts? Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Yes, yeah. that's right. It sounds spiritual. Oh, you ought to seek for God, but don't ask for gifts. That's wrong. Yeah. That's not what the Bible teaches. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was Tozer many years ago, and I've got a great respect for A.W. Tozer, but he was wrong. He said, oh no, don't forbid tongues and the gifts, but don't seek for them. A great man like Tozer, a prophet of the church, and he said, don't seek for the gifts. Do you know what? And I've got the highest regard for Tozer, like Ravenhill and other men, and Wilkerson and many others. But do you know what? Tozer was wrong in that point. Because look with me, verse 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts. It's a command. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Since really take a hold of this. We are to covet earnestly the best gifts. Now underline that word covet earnestly. 
It actually is the Greek word zelo, where we get zeal from, or to be zealous, or to burn with fire. It means to have a deep longing within your heart. It means to have a deep burning desire. We are commanded in the Bible, covet earnestly the best gifts. Notice some gifts are called best. The best gifts. What is the best gift? It's the gift that you need at that time. Yeah. Do you know if we're all sick in here? We don't need prophecy, we need healing. <laughs> we need a touch of God. Yeah. I tell you, if you need God to encourage you, we, we don't need a miracle somewhere. We need encourage with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He is actually saying, I want you to burn. Paul writing to the Corinthians. And you know what? There was ignorance in the church. There was abuse in the church. Some of them, all they wanted to do was speak in tongues. And Paul said, you know what, when I'm a monk shepherd, I speak five yeah. words in your language yeah. so you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to preach to you. I want to give you a doctrine. Mm. You know, some people that can't sit down and listen, preaching and teaching. Oh, I'm a worship person. Mm. Really? Mm. Oh, the young generation need worship. And the oldies like my mummy there, oh, they like the teaching. But us young generation, we like to worship. No. That's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. I tell you, saints, we need to come back to the reality of Scripture again. We are to seek the best gifts, the one that is needed most. Notice as well in chapter 14 and verse 1. He says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. It's the same word. You're to burn with the fire saying, I need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then again in chapter 14, verse 39, it says, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. What's he saying there? The church is commanded, saints, we as a church, LCC, you are to burn for these gifts. Yeah. You're not to be satisfied. You're, you're, you're like the example of Jeffrey there with his big Christmas box. Well, maybe the box will miraculously open. Yeah. <laughs> I'm praying over the box that if, if the presents for me, it's going to jump out of the box and hit me. Saints, it doesn't happen. You are to seek, you are to pray, you are to believe. You are a member of the body. These gifts are not for the preacher or the leadership. It's for the members of the body. It's for you sitting in this church. Saints, it's not just an audience. Yeah. You don't just come to church and say, let Brother Keith get on with it. Let the worship team get on with it. You are a member of the body. And saints, you ought to be praying for the gifts. Lord, if you're going to use someone, will you use me? Will you move upon me? Notice as well in chapter 12, 13, 14, it's the public operation. When you come together. But where are these people who aren't at a church and they want to prophesy over you? Beware of them. You know what these gifts are for? Public gatherings that we can all judge them. Some people don't like their gift tested. Alarm bells. Yeah. Oh, I want to give you a word. Well, let's come into the gathering. Let's go and ask Brother Keith. No, 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 no. Let's not. Do you know why? They're scared of those things being tested. These gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the public operation. Saints, in our Wednesday nights, in our Sunday mornings, in our Friday nights, when we come together, these gifts are to be in the midst that the Holy Spirit wants to show himself. How does he? Does he do it as a cloud? Does he do it mystically? Oh, I hope you move. Saints, he's going to move through you. These gifts are to operate through you. He's going to use your mouth. He's going to use your mind. He's going to move on your heart. He wants the Holy Spirit wants to move through you as an individual. You're not clay. You're flesh and blood. You're a living member of the body. And he wants to use you. Notice they're spiritual gifts. They're spiritual gifts. They're not natural gifts. You don't learn them. You don't progressively pick these gifts up. You instantly get one of these gifts. They instantly, you didn't have it yesterday. It wasn't, you didn't know that yesterday, but the gift suddenly shines forth in your life. It is the product of the Holy Spirit, not of your mind, not of your education. It's not your ability. Saints, I can't heal a headache, yeah. but I assure you the Holy Spirit used me to heal the sick. 
He has done. I can't do that. I never could do it. I never can do it. But the Holy Spirit in me, it came from him. And since I believe he heals and I believe he can operate in me and through me in the body, I believe that with all my heart. There's spiritual gifts. Notice the word gifts. What does it mean? It's the word charisma. Being corrupted in our day for charismatic. But the word charisma is gifts. It means an endowment, a favour bestowed. Something given to you by grace. You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. You don't work it up. You don't pay money for it. Or you get in trouble. Mm. These gifts are given by God. You do not deserve them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God actually gives them to you. It's not a mark of spiritual maturity. You can have someone saved a day or a week. And they can operate in a gift of the Holy Spirit. And not even know what they're doing. Mm. They can literally do that. It's not a sign they're spiritual. Oh God healed the sick through me. It's not a sign of spirituality. It's of his grace operating through the body. You know why he often does that? It's just to show, hey, anybody can have these gifts in the body. Anybody, any member of that local church. Notice it's also under the will of the spirit. You can operate these gifts according to your will. Chapter 12, verse 7, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Then in verse 11, it says, Dividing to every man severally as he will. In other words, he distributes them yeah. according to his will. Who does it? It's according to his will. You're to burn for the gifts. It's him who decides. You don't decide, I'm going to prophesy. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know why the church is filled with so much counterfeit gifts of the Holy Spirit? Is because they saw nothing happened, so they invented it. And they said, I will prophesy. Yeah. You better be careful of prophesying when the Holy Spirit doesn't prophesy. Right. Your dream could be yeah. bananas that you ate last night. Yeah, exactly. Don't bring that into the church. We don't want it. There is a supernatural element. These are spiritual gifts. They're supernatural. They're not natural. They're actually of the will of the Holy Spirit. He decides who he gives the gifts to. Not me, the preacher. I can't tell you what gift you've got. I can't hand them out as sweeties. It's the Holy Spirit will move in you. And you'll operate in something you've never done before. You've never prophesied before. You've never healed the sick before. You've, you've never had the power of God come on you. And suddenly he does. And you're moved to do something you've never in your entire Christian experience ever done. How long are the gifts in the spirit or in the church? Because many people in the church say they're not for today. It was for the day of the apostles, but we've come to maturity now. We don't need the gifts. That's what they teach. The gifts were only for the apostles. No, Paul's saying that it was for the whole Corinthian church. And what they say is, we've come to maturity now. We don't need them anymore. That is not what the Bible teaches. Yeah. Look at verse chapter 12, uh, sorry, chapter 13, verse 8. It talks about the gifts of prophecy, of tongues, of knowledge. And it says they fail. They will one day fail. They'll cease. They'll vanish away. Can I tell you tongues of prophecy are going to vanish away one yeah, day? Yeah. They are. They're only a temporary thing. They're not for the world to come. You're not going to use them in the millennium. You're not going to have them in eternity. It's only for now. If you don't operate in the gifts now, you never will throughout eternity. Yeah. If you don't seek for them now, they're not for the millennium. Saints, they're for now because we need them. Yes. Notice what Paul teaches in verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. These verses teach that when that which is perfect is come, yeah. that which is in part shall be done away with. The gifts, the tongues, prophecy, it's only in part. Paul actually teaches here, says, I prophesy in part. When I prophesy, it's not in utter perfection. Nothing is in the church. But do you know what he says? He says, now I prophesy in part. But he says, when that which is perfect is come. What's he talking about? What the Bible? He's not talking about the Bible. He says, when that which is perfect is come, all these gifts are going to finish. 
And what's he saying here? He says, on that day I'm going to see him face to face. That's when the gifts stop. He says, now I know in part, but then shall I know him even as he knows me. And then the gifts are going to stop. I won't need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I am going to gaze upon Jesus Christ. It's when Jesus returns again. Amen. And until Jesus returns, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in the church. Saints, here this morning, can I exhort you, encourage you, stir you up that there's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that Paul mentions here. Let me briefly give them to you. I'm almost out of my time. But let me give you these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Don't leave them covered up. Yes. Don't just mock the people who say, the Spirit told me all the time. When's the last time the Holy Spirit spoke to you? Because never mock them when you're not... Seeking yeah. for him to speak to you. Do you know what the Spirit does speak? Yeah, he does. Remember what he said to Philip the Evangelist. Truth, truth. Go and join truth, yourself truth. to that chariot yeah. and witness to him. Yeah. And when he did, he's running along yeah. by the chariot. <laughs> and here's the man in the chariot, a eunuch on his way back to his homeland. Yeah. And he's reading Isaiah. Yeah. And he's reading about the lamb that's slain. And he's saying, what am I reading? And Philip just happens to be there. Hey, do you know what you're reading? You can see Jeffrey do this on the high street, couldn't you? Hey, do you know what you're reading? Man, I haven't got a clue. Do you want me to help you? Yeah, jump up. And he gets up into that chariot. He says, man, I know everything. Do you know what the Holy Spirit told me? To be here. Do you realize we need the Holy Spirit? That would never have happened. If he couldn't hear from the Holy Spirit. Do you realize we need to hear from the Holy Spirit? We do. There's a, a dimension of God. If you only mock them out there, you're a hypocrite. Right. When's the last time you spoke from God? When's the last time the Holy Spirit spoke to you? When's the last time you were led? It's not enough to mock the false. We need the real in this church. And when the real comes, we'll say, man, that's a counterfeit. We want the real. The first gift of the Spirit. Notice with me here, as we read in verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. What is the word of wisdom? We'll teach this more fully some other time. But I just want you to begin to desire these gifts. The first gift is the word of wisdom. What is the word of wisdom? The word, word there. Notice it's a word of wisdom. It's not the gift of wisdom. See, if I give you the gift of wisdom, it would be the fullness of God's wisdom. This isn't the gift of wisdom. God doesn't give you all wisdom. He said it's a word of wisdom. It's a little bit of wisdom for a specific situation. The word word there is logos. Logos. What does logos mean? It's a spoken word. It is a word that you put on your lips. It's a portion of God's wisdom. A little bit of God's wisdom for a specific situation in the church. Have you ever been in this church and you go, I'm in a crisis and I don't know what to do. Yeah. I am in a situation or I'm faced with two paths. Or maybe your girl and two guys come along and go, what do I do? I need wisdom. I need a word of wisdom. Yeah. Do you know what it's, it is here? It's just a little portion, a limited portion of God's wisdom. Not the fullness of his wisdom. And it's specific for someone in that church. Yeah. You need God's wisdom. You're in trouble. You're in crisis. You're asking for his will. You need him to help you. You don't know what to do. Have you ever been there? Oh God, help me. Do you think he's just going to flutter down? Do you know what the word of wisdom is for the church? Imagine if you walk in that door and someone stands up and you've been praying all night and you wake up in the morning filled with anxiety. Oh God, I need your wisdom. And you walk in the door and you're sitting there and Brother Paul stands up and he has a word of wisdom and he doesn't know all that's happening in your life. He doesn't know anything. It's just the Holy Spirit prompting him with a word of wisdom for someone in that meeting. That is a word of wisdom. It is God's wisdom. The word wisdom means skill, ability, or sound, accurate judgment. To know what to do, when to do it. To know God's will, to know God's purpose for your life or a situation. 
It is God's direction, a revelation, a mystery revealed. Something's hidden, but it gets opened up by a word of wisdom, revealing secret things. Remember in the Old Testament, God spoke to Noah. He's going to judge the world. And he says, Noah, make an ark. That's a word of wisdom. Noah, tragedy's coming, but here is what I want you to do. Build an ark. Build an ark. That's a word of wisdom. Or what about God speaking to Jonah? Saying, Jonah, go to Nineveh. That's specific, isn't it? Oh, well, I know God's called me to go preach everywhere. Wonderful. But you know, God speaks at a point in your life and he says, I want you to go to Nineveh. Right. What did he do? He went up and ran the opposite way. But God got him in the end. I tell you, this is a word of wisdom. Or in Acts chapter 13, the church at Antioch, the Holy Spirit speaks through someone in that church service. They're all worshipping the Lord. And the Holy Spirit uses someone in that meeting. And he says, listen. The Spirit speaking through an individual says, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Mm. Do you hear me? There's the Holy Spirit in the church. He used someone to say, I want you to separate out. They're not for the preaching in this church anymore. Can you imagine that? One of you saying, man, Brother Keith ain't going anywhere. He's staying here. I mean, being convinced of it. And then one day the Holy Spirit moves on you. And there's things going on in my life you don't even know. And circumstance and emails. And someone stands up. Someone who would want me here. And they say, the Lord says separate Brother Keith and Sister Candace to the ministry that God has called them to. That's a word of wisdom. Yeah. To know what to do and when to do it. Amen. We're talking about the genuine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Saints, I'm going to slow down here and do part two next week, okay? <laughs> but I really want us to hear this. These are the gifts that are being outpoured on the church. Yeah. It's going to help us in the days ahead. We've got to have these gifts. We're going to begin to pray. You might have been ignorant an hour ago, but you're not going to be ignorant. Yes. And we're going to begin to seek with knowledge and understanding and faith and with love in our hearts. And that's what we want. That first gift is the word of wisdom. Have I ever operated in? I believe the Lord has. You know, we ran a school here in Limerick many years ago. And we were only out of one terrible situation. Three days I'm in a horrendous trial that made my wife cry, almost broke my heart. Only three days. And we moved the entire school out of a building in this city that will remain secret. Wow. And it, it, we moved into another building. I said, I can't go through this. A three, four week school. Yeah. And we moved to another building. And I'm sitting there Monday morning at about quarter past five in the morning. And I'm just reading my Bible as is normal. And I'm reading it, looking forward to the school. Praise God, the trial's over. Man, we've got freedom here. And I'm sitting reading my Bible from Joshua. And the Lord speaks to me. Not words. Not audible. Yeah. But as clear as anything. Said, I am going to show you the next trial that you're going to face. And I went, oh no. <laughs> Only three days out of the last one. And now you're telling me about the next trial. And he said, listen. He said, if you do not hear what I say, you're going to get deceived in this next trial. If you go by your eyes or your ears, you're going to get deceived. And you've got to listen to me. And he gave me the whole pattern of what I was to do. And how I was to walk. That's a word of wisdom. To know what to do. To know how to do. And you know what? I walked through to Candace and said, Candace, brace yourself. God has just told me about our next trial. And do you know what he done? He gave me a particular sentence and I wrote it down. A particular sentence. He said, this is how you'll know. This is how you'll know. So for three months I'm praying and I'm fasting and I'm seeking the Lord. I'm going, I'm looking all around, looking behind me, looking over. I'm prayed up, I'm ready. And after three months I went, man, nothing's happening here. And just began to relax a bit. And then I walked straight into that situation. And I'm sitting in a car with a man. 
Oh, he looked squeaky clean. He dressed with his shirt and a tie. And he preached so perfectly. And everything was right. And I thought he was a friend. And I thought he was a man of God. And he's sitting in that car. And he says something. I went, boy, what's going on here? Mm. Has a conversation. And I go, what is happening here? I didn't sleep good that night. I'm in a battle. My bed was wet with perspiration that night. I didn't tell my wife for another few weeks. I'm trying to pray through this. And you know what? The next night, I'm going to go prepare to preach the next message. And he keeps me in the corner. Everyone else leaves that convention. And he corners me. And he says something. I said, hold on, bro. What are you saying? And he comes out with the sentence that God gave me four months before. And he speaks, he says, let me say this plainly. And he said the entire sentence. I said, whoa. <laughs> this is what God warned me about. Yeah. God just gave me the code word to say, he's your man. Wow. It's the next one. I never would have known. And now I know what to do. Didn't tell him. Mm. And I stepped back and went, man, I know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> For the next three nights, I, I soaked that bed in my sweat. With anxiety, with the pressure of this. Never told her. And you know what? That man was going to take over the entire school of Christ internationally. And he wanted to start with Europe. And he had plans for America. And he had all these people on board. And you know what? We saw God showed us it. And we began to pray for the mind of God. And I believe that one word of wisdom given to me at quarter past five in the morning as I read my Bible. No flashing stars. I'm just reading. I said a word of wisdom mm -hmm. to warn you of what's to come. Mm -hmm. And here is what you're to do. Let me give you the second one. Then we're going to close here today. The knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Notice, it's a word of wisdom, it's a word of knowledge. But it's the same Holy Spirit. He's got nine different gifts, very different gifts, but it's the same Holy Spirit. But he operates in an individual differently. He wants to shine forth in your life in a way that I've never experienced do you know there's some of these gifts I've never operated in? I, they're a mystery to me. I can't operate in them. Why? God didn't give it to me. And I've seen others and I go, I don't know how to do that. I can't do it. Sometimes I think I'm close to it, but nothing happens. I can't manufacture it. It has to be the Holy Spirit. But it's the same Holy Spirit. Notice the second thing, a word of knowledge. Notice again, it's a word of knowledge. A logos of knowledge. It's a spoken thing. It's something that you actually receive as a revelation. And you speak it to the church. It's for the body of Christ. But it's not all of God's knowledge. It's not the gift of knowledge. Man, he's a good Bible teacher. He must have the gift of knowledge. That's rubbish. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the gift of knowledge. I, I tell you, Brother Clendenin, I watch young Christians go up to him. Brother Clendenin, what do you think this means in the Bible? He says, I don't know. He's up in his 80s. Always, I'd, I'd be sitting there going, man, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. And Brother Clendenin said, I don't know. And this young Christian saved for a year. And he said, but you know what? <coughs> when the Lord tells you, come and tell me, will you? Amen. I tell you, that, that's a man of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, nobody has the gift of knowledge. I certainly don't. But it's a gift for this church, for you in this church. A word of knowledge. Suddenly, supernatural, you get knowledge to convey to the church for others. It's for everybody to help the church. Or a word of wisdom. Man, I've got a blind and light of wisdom. I didn't have it an hour ago. But the Holy Spirit reveals his wisdom. Or he reveals his knowledge. And it's for somebody in the church. What is knowledge or a word of knowledge? It's facts. It's details. It's information. It could be about the past. A word of knowledge could be stand saying. Do you know, I was in a meeting once. And a preacher, pastor friend I worked with, we traveled. We went into a meeting in a little village called Glenboig. And we're there. And he prophesied to this man he'd never met before. Or sorry, it was a lady. 
in the meeting and he pointed her out he had a word of knowledge and, and, and he said lady I've got a prophecy but it's he said sorry to say it's, it's almost Irish he said I'm Irish I'm from Dublin he didn't know that it's a little Scottish village and he says here is the word the Lord's given me and he described a situation from the day before of where she was sitting in the kitchen having a conversation exact details that's a word of knowledge you see that's information I couldn't have known you couldn't have known but God takes a little bit of knowledge and reveals it why to be spoken to someone why he's got a message for them that's a word of knowledge it's the Holy Spirit saying I'm here Mrs. I'm here, I'm on your case. Sir, I know everything about your impossible situation and I am here to move in it. We do see the word of knowledge in the Bible. You remember when King Saul was anointed king? And when Samuel anointed him, he says, after you leave me today, you're going to walk down the door, you're, down the road, you'll meet three men. And this is what they're going to be carrying in their arms. That's a word of knowledge. And this is how you know I've met with you today. This is how you know it's real. Because when you leave here, you'll meet the three men. Imagine getting a word like that today. The Holy Spirit comes on you. And the Lord saying, I've called you to preach. Yeah. And a word of knowledge comes in the meeting. And it, it, it says, sir, when you leave here and you go to Tesco and you're going to walk in the door of Tesco and there's going to come walking out two ladies and a man and one of them's going to have a big Christmas tree and the other one's going to have a turkey. Not hard to get that right this time of year. And the other one will have a pile of books and all of this is a token that I've called you to preach. That's what happened with Saul. That's actually what happened. Or what about Elijah? Remember Elijah got discouraged. Remember he was very discouraged. He said, I'm the only one left. Yeah. No one's preaching truth. Yeah. Nobody wants truth. Nobody believes this anymore. I am the last preacher. Everybody else is compromised. And he's looking with his eyes, isn't he? And he looks, you see, he's going by what he knows. Yeah. He doesn't know an awful lot like you and me. But listen, as we close... The Lord speaks to him and says, Elijah, there's 7,000 other people who haven't bowed the knee. And they're hidden in caves of 50s. Mm -hmm. And they haven't compromised. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. You're discouraged. And you're going, woe is me. It's all over. And nobody loves truth anymore. Hold on. I want to tell you there's 7,000 others. A word of knowledge. You didn't know those facts. But I'm revealing it to you. Why? To encourage you. To edify it. Get up off your seat and stop being silly. Yeah. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. There's multitudes in this world seeking truth. But you don't see them. And you don't know them. And you don't always meet them in Limerick. But I assure you there's an army in this world. All over this world who want the real. And they're seeking after God. And I assure you many years ago. And I close with this. This is my third and final close. Many years ago. I was living in Switzerland. I was about 21 years old. My mum was coming from Ireland to visit. And in the middle of the night I had a dream. And in the dream she's sitting in front of me. Telling me things about our past that I never knew. I'd never seen them. I never heard about them. I didn't know them. I come down. I told the lady we're staying with. I said do you know. That I had this dream. Very strange dream. Says you need to speak to your mommy. Mommy arrives. What I don't know is she is about to have a conversation with me to convey those facts. I don't know them. And she's worried. She's filled with anxiety saying, how am I going to tell Keith? How do I have this conversation? And as soon as we sit down, no, we haven't talked. We sit down and I say, mom, I had a strange dream last night. And I started to tell her and she just went, oh. <laughs> and she started to tell me and I didn't know those facts that is a word of knowledge the Lord revealing something do you know Sandy Thompson the man who prayed for me the night I got baptised in the Holy Spirit spoke in tongues many years ago he was going to preach in Belfast he lived in Israel and he came over to Belfast to preach 
And this is the story I got told. He's the, the pastor's going to preach on the Sunday night. Then he's going to start a Monday night and preach through to Friday. And the pastor's in his little room at the back of the church. And he's praying an hour before the meeting. He's panicking. You know why? He's got two different texts. Two different verses in two different places in the Bible. And he's saying, Lord, I can't get an answer. I'm not hearing from you. Which verse do I preach on? Do I preach on this one or this one? And he wasn't hearing anything. And he's wrestling. And now 30 minutes, the meeting's getting closer. And then 15 minutes. It's a knock on the door. And Sandy Thompson come to the door. And he went, oh no, someone at the door. I don't need this. I need my time. And Sandy stuck his head in the door and he said, Pastor, I'm not going to disturb you, don't worry. I want you to carry on. The Lord spoke to me and said, you're wrestling over two different verses and you don't know which to preach. <laughs> and he said, here's the two verses. A verse here and a verse here. He told him what the two verses were. And he says, the Lord says he wants you to preach this verse. <laughs> And he says, when you preach the gospel tonight and you make an altar call, this amount of people are going to come forward and stand to get born again at the end of the meeting. The Lord. That's a word of knowledge. Amen. That actually happened. And it wasn't the only time it happened with that man. Yeah. And he said, you know what? I'm going now. You carry on. And the pastor went, praise God. Amen. The burden's lifted. Hallelujah. Do you know that night when he preached the gospel and he gave the altar call? He says, if you want to give your life to Jesus, if you want to be born again, if you want to repent of your sins, come forth. You've never done it before. And the people come. He can't, he can't make that happen. And he starts to count. That's what was revealed in the word of knowledge that night. What am I telling you? It's real. Can I give you just one last testimony before yes. I close? See, my mommy's here. <laughs> you don't mind if I talk about my mommy a wee bit. <laughs> Do you know, they always say it's a good sign when a man who's married talks about his wife and his messages. <laughs> always a good sign. If they don't mention what you worry. So I guess it must be a good sign if I, I haven't been a perfect son. She hasn't been a perfect mommy. But we love each other. And the Lord's been so good. Amen. Let me finish with this. Many years ago I was in Germany. Lost my wallet. Had all my money. All my bank cards. All my fuel cards. It had my army ID cards. It had everything in it. And I lost it. That's serious. The next morning, very early, I'm leaving to drive to Switzerland from Germany. A seven hour drive. But I lost my wallet. And you know what? I searched my room, my lockers, my car. I searched my car three times top to bottom. I didn't miss a bit of it. Hear me. Yeah. I didn't miss a bit of it or so I thought. I searched everything. I am panicking. I searched all my lockers. I ripped everything apart. I am in big trouble. So what does a good... Son do, in a case when you're panicking. <laughs> I'll never forget the phone box in Easel and I drove to the phone box. You have mobiles now, we had phone boxes in. And I got out of the car. I am panicking. This is about nine at night. I'm going to leave in the morning. I am finished. I'm soaked with sweat. I am panicking. I am wit wit's end. So what to do? I phone mommy. <laughs> about tw 21 years old. And I phoned my mom and I said, Mom, I've lost my wallet. This isn't a natural son phoning his natural mom. Do you know what? I need someone to pray. Yeah. That, that's what I'm a asking. So I phoned her up and she says, let's pray. She prayed on the phone to being led by miracles or manifestations. But what does it do? It helps me. It encourages me. It lifts my heart. I'm in trouble. I can't do anything. The Holy Spirit comes to do what we cannot do. Let's stand here. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints, happy.